Hello retro computer enthusiasts. Today I'm going to show you the Atari 400. I'm actually going to upgrade this system so that it has more RAM. Currently this system only has 16k of RAM in it. What was amazing is that when this system first came out in November of 1979 the Atari 400 only had 4k of RAM and the Atari 800 only had 8k. Uh, by the time the end of life came to these machines the, the Atari 400 had 16k and the Atari 800 had 48k. So if we turn on this system we go into memo pad because there is no ROM, uh, basic ROM, on the Atari 400. So let's uh, let's put in a uh, basic cartridge and find out how much uh, RAM is in this system. I'm pretty sure it's 16k. And to find out how much RAM, you type. PRNT space FRE, which stands for free, and I don't know why we have this argument to it. But anyway, so there we go. Uh, we have 13K available for use. I guess BASIC is taking a little bit of the uh, memory. Uh, the other thing we should confirm is that the sound is actually working with this system as well. Make sure this is a fully functional computer. Oh, I'm using. Uh, an ultimate cart and I've uh, downloaded some ROMs uh, from my actual cartridges that I own and I just put them on here so that uh, I can enjoy them without taking out the, the cartridge all the time. So let's go to a cartridge. A lot of these games uh, won't run simply because there's not enough uh, RAM in them but I do know that Pac-Man uh, runs. So let's just confirm that uh, Pac-Man on this system. I'll press start. Well, let's pull out our uh, joystick and see what we can do here. Oh, it helps if I have the joystick facing the right way. Anyway, that's enough fun. Uh, confirm the sound is working, the graphics are working. So Now it's time to see what else we can do here. So, so now I'm going to uh, show you this amazing little uh, box that I got from. I um, can't remember the name, fellow's name, but I'll I'll put it up. So what he's written on here is this is a memory add-on card for a 30-year-old Atari 400 computer. And it was uh, 22 euros, according to here. So basically, there's two things. Uh, inside, there's a memory card. Inside the uh, Atari 400, there is a CPU card and a memory card. And this is a replacement for that memory card. It'll replace the 16K uh, to, to bring it up to actually 52 K, um, or optionally just down to 48k. But we have to do some wiring on the actual uh, motherboard to make it know when there's a cartridge present or there'll be a memory conflict. So that's the first step. We're going to uh, take apart the Atari 400. Okay, now we're at the stage where we want to be able to uh, uh, take this apart and see what's involved in doing the actual wiring for setting up the memory. So uh, I'll disconnect the, the uh, power supply. And uh, one of the things that's interesting about this power supply is that it's actually 9 volts AC, not DC. So a lot of people try and use uh, 9 volt DC power supplies and um, they just, uh, you know, it might work, but it's kind of hard on the electronics. So stick with the uh, AC supply. These things almost never die. I have heard of very few AC uh, supplies dying because uh, it's AC. So first thing we need to do is remove all four of these screws.
Now we need to remove the RF shielding, which is huge in the uh, Atari 400. Uh, disconnect the speaker, take off the case covering. There's a couple of screws beside the uh, power supply that you need to remove before you can lift up the shield. We'll need uh, just two wires. Uh, we'll tin them up and get ready to put them on the uh, motherboard. Now, next step is figure out where that is. Okay, the lower one, first one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven in. Okay, those are good. Let's do the next set, which is... Where'd my wire? This part's pretty boring. I'm, uh, after I solder it in, I'm checking, I'm double checking, I'm triple checking, making sure I've got everything in the right place. Because you can never be too careful. So then I realized, oh, you know, I put on the, sh the shield, connect it all back up and realize, oh man, I haven't put the memory card in yet. So that was pretty stupid. So then I have to take the shield off again in order to uh, put the memory card in. But you can't take the, uh, the shield off unless you take the AC power supply board out now. So that was the next step, just uh, removing a couple of screws so that I could uh, get the AC power supply board out. Finally, that's out. I mean, this can come off. It does. Okay, so here's the two memory cards that I was talking about. Uh, this is the uh, CPU card. And so this must be the memory card. It's probably never seen the light of day. All nicely socketed. Wow, it's, it's one of the nice things about that day and age is things were properly socketed. Now, apparently I need to remove a, uh, a chip. Remove the 74S42 chip. The one in the middle between the cartridge connector and the RAM connector. I see it. That's going to be a bitch to remove. Oh, I think goodness I can get this out. Okay, so looking here, and I don't know if you can see it. So I have to remove the uh, 74LS42. That would be this guy. 
I have to be careful not to destroy it because it does need to go into the new card. Keep the okay. Keep that chip around if you ever want to return it to the original state. Solder wires can remain. Also, when the genuine Atari 16 kilobyte RAM card is used. Now, take the short ribbon, and there's an IDE cable, and it is a keyed cable, so that goes in like this. And. Since there's no keying on the actual unit itself, I better make sure that it's plugged the right way. Oh, there's these jumpers. Let's see what we got set up now. They won't disappear on me. We have memory mode. Right now, see jumper info on the back. Well, that's nice. Well, let's go with uh, 52 kilobytes of RAM, which is uh, 1 and 2. So normally it's set up for 48, so let's go to 52. Might as well. And the other one is the ROM select mode. Uh, 1 and 2 is use the EEPROM that's on this card, or 2 and 3 use the EEPROMs on the main board. I will use the uh, 1 and 2. And the slot select. Well, The default is 1 and 1, which is use offset 0, 0, 0 and 3FFF. Is that the normal one? Let's check. ROM select. The last and rightmost jumper is called the OS uh, select contains two bridges for up to four different selections. These options are only valid when ROM mode selects. So the first one... Okay, now it's uh, time to put everything back together. Uh, the power supply, the shielding, everything. I'm about to plug in the AC adapter. And turn on this creature. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> I guess it would help if I uh, connected this guy up. Turn the power on. Oh, that's not good. So as concerned I'd uh, done something wrong with the wiring, I checked again and it was absolutely right. Contacted the developer and he said uh, the system's only been used on PAL systems, not NTSC. And perhaps that's an issue. Um, but I started doing some troubleshooting and found out the problem only occurs when the bottom shield is on, so I don't know if there's some interference coming in from the shielding. So I removed the shielding and it works fine. Hi guys, I'm in the process of replacing my 16K RAM card in my Atari 400 with a 52K RAM card, but I'm only going to set it up for 48K. Uh, this is actually simpler than the Atari uh, kit because it only requires two wires to be soldered in and uh, it's 
you know, fairly simple. But I'm having a very odd system. So uh, if I turn on the system, uh, everything is fine. It has no problem. However, when I put the actual uh, shield on, I get something absolutely bizarre. Okay. Now, if I lift the shield, as I slowly lift it, there's less and less weirdness. I put it back down. I lift it up. Has anyone seen this? Any ideas what this might be? It's certainly not because something is pressing on here. It's, it's uh, literally just... If it gets close, I don't even need to actually touch anything. 